Hello my friends, welcome back to Wild Wild's videos. You've probably seen this magnetic motor in various designs on YouTube before. I have looked at this principle before and would like to go into it in more detail this time. In this video I explain the functional principle and the idea behind it very clearly. The principle of the motor is to enable continuous movement and thus generate free energy. Of course, many people say that generating free energy is nonsense and impossible. Science also tells us that no energy can come from nothing, apart from quantum mechanics. However, people's statements are not proof and science speaks in complicated formulas, though that not everyone understands them. The principle of this engine has been around for decades and why shouldn't it have any justification, if it were total rubbish? The idea behind the free energy engine is also a good one and could make the difference here. So in order to recognize whether there is a trick that science has not yet thought of, you have to take a closer look. So let's start by taking a closer look. Here we see a hollow white cylinder that is suspended from the center of a rod and rotates on ball bearings. Small magnets are firmly embedded in the cylinder in a specific pattern so that they rotate with the cylinder when it rotates and vice versa. At the side of the cylinder a very large magnet is directed toward these rotatively mounted magnetic patterns so that its magnetic field can interact with the magnetic fields of the smaller magnets. Obviously this causes the cylinder to rotate. Let's reduce the motor to its essential components. Everything that is not part of the functional components is removed. The magnets are detached from the white cylinder and because it is not so easy to understand how they work on a circular object, I transfer the rolled up magnets to a flat surface. It is easy to see that rows of magnets point symmetrically outwards and overlap at their ends. The principle works with magnetic attraction. If the large magnet is now placed on the open end of the track in such a way that it is attracted by the magnets on the track and if we take into account that the magnet can only move along the track in one dimension as it is firmly suspended it would move to the point of greatest attraction. This is a place where the magnetic field overlap and are closest to the large magnet. The magnet could now be carried beyond this so-called sticky point by its own kinetic energy and thus continue its movement on the next orbit. A continuous movement is created. Looks good, doesn't it? But it doesn't work and I will now explain why. The trick I'm using now is to translate the magnetic field into a gravitational field that has exactly the same effect for our example but with which everyone is immediately familiar. We are all very familiar with gravity. Take a look at how a steel ball moves on a glass plate when it comes into a magnetic field. We are not surprised that the sphere behaves similarly to a planet in the gravitational field of a sun. So, I designed this model to illustrate this. In the model the magnetic attraction becomes a depression with a ball in it as the magnetic force. The ball that falls into the deepening is therefore the effect. The depth of the depression corresponds to the strength of the field. The forces are equalized if the depression remains unchanged and the ball comes to a standstill there. A balance is created. If a force is exerted at right angles to the direction of action of the magnetic field, the ball is pushed up the slope from the recess. The force that is exerted to move the same mutually repelling poles of magnets towards each other is represented symmetrically to the attraction as an increase. The ball on it always tries to roll down the slope towards least repulsion. The poles try to avoid each other. This feeling is familiar to anyone who has ever tried to put two repelling poles together. After the magnets have moved out of the way, a balance is also created. 
Let us now apply this principle to the magnetic motor. We have seen that the positioning of the rows of the magnets on the cylinder creates a sequence of magnetic rams that overlap each other. The closer the magnets are to each other, the stronger the intervening field of attraction. This maximum is overcome by the momentum of the rotation of the white cylinder and the mass inertia in the motor we are looking at. Now please take a look at how the magnetic field of such a magnetic ramp actually works, if you visualize it using my gravitational model. Here I use a series of magnets that attract the steel ball at the top and the marble ball below is the transfer to the gravitational model. As we can see, with a simple ramp it is not realistic for the magnetic sphere to leave the ramp independently at the point of highest attraction of the ramp. We will now check whether this also applies the mutually overlapping ramps. For graphical simplification I reduce the two magnetic rows to one row that lies under the gravitational model and transfer the differences in strengths of the magnetic fields according to the distance of the magnets from the sphere. The superposition of the magnets remain and can be seen in the gravitational model as a slightly steeper gradient. As in the previous example, the maximum of the magnetic field of the magnetic ramps is shown as a depression and it is easy to see that it is rather counterproductive. The rise to the next ramp is now even longer. The roller should therefore exhibit the following behavior. What has to happen for the motor to work as the designer intended? It's quite simple. A kind of magnetic lift would have to be activated and lift the ball over the next incline. This means that additional energy has to be applied to overcome the sticky point. This achieves the result we want to see, but unfortunately no energy is generated. What do we learn from this? The system looks as if it could create a permanent imbalance. But there is no permanent imbalance in our world. There is no infinitely high mountain and you can't go downhill indefinitely. Infinity is probably not part of our universe and so everything tends towards equilibrium. I hope I have been able to shed some light on the magical world of perpetual motion mobile magnet motors. If you liked the video, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel if you dare. Thanks for watching.